Many have asked over the years for this. Uh, when we declare uh, in a comment, for instance, in reply that Jasher has occult leanings or influences, uh, which we've always thought incredibly obvious from even a cursory glance at the book. It doesn't take long, and these four videos will show this. I know, how dare we suggest such. We get that from time to time. You have already seen two full videos which prove the Book of Jubilees is the ancient Yashar, not this modern fraud called Jasher from Pharisees manipulating the word as usual and in very, very obvious poise. Of course, they want us to take the four videos here we're producing, uh, as well as the two previous, so I'll place them all in one comment, because that's society today. They want everything in a soundbite, and you can't prove things that way, and we could care less how long these videos are and who wants to criticize for whatever. Now, you know, sum them up into a few sentences so, well, they don't have to deal with the uh, overwhelming amount of evidence that is their problem. Jasher is packed with occult influences, not a few. In this and the next three videos, we will break these down to 25 each in more of a commentary format as we ain't going to treat this fraud as scripture. We're just, we're not. And we want to demonstrate just how numerous these fraud, occult lies are. I mean, it's so obvious. We are going to expose it for good Starting now, if you wish to follow along, you can download the J.H. Perry version. We'll actually have it, uh, a picture of the cover on screen for the next several uh, slides, which is what we had acquired and read together. So that's the one that we've used. Um, I don't know that we could say that any are credible because we see no credibility to this book in any version, and we've read several. We are sorely disappointed with this book and that any ministry, channel, or one calling themselves a truth seeker even could remotely consider this book as anything but a fraud. They clearly have not tested it. It has no historicity, not even the accurate references to what Joshua and Samuel quote as the book of Yashar, but even more so, the content, and that's what you'll see now, this says it all. Let's begin our first 25 reasons why the modern Jasher is an occult fraud. These will likely be long and in commentary format again. We rarely do that, and when we do, well, of course, children come in and criticize that. We could care less. We're going to do what we do. We know likely trolls and illiterate bloggers uh, especially do that, but that's the format for these videos. That's what we're doing. Anyone complaining about that will be muted, so just don't try it. Our channel, our rules. You've been warned. If you are a Jasher apologist, and I know there's some YouTube channels that we've followed over the years that are, you will likely be offended many times over by these four videos. All we can say is, you're welcome. Suck it up. You can handle this. Show a little maturity here and test this book because clearly you have not. If you do not agree with a point here or there, well, that's fine, and, but we don't want to hear about it. That's not open on this video. We're done with that for these. This is going to be a comprehensive list of everything we see wrong, and it's not everything, by the way. There's far more with this book of Jasher, this modern Jasher, uh, purporting to be scripture and replacing the book of Jubilees. This is why we get very righteously angry about this, because this is stealing the position of the book of Jubilees, which is Torah, and that's unacceptable to us. If one wants to attempt such debate here, well, you better bring your proof, and, well, if you don't have it, and you won't, because we know better, you will be muted for debating in ignorance. Again, our channel, our rules, please respect them. I know that our regular viewers will. This commentary will be accurate and will represent what this modern jasher actually says. And again, you can read along if you wish. It will be on screen so you can go find it. Uh, now, I'm going to pick up the pace and blow through these as quickly as I can without being too fast, hopefully, and uh, because there's just so much to cover. 
you can always rewind and go back and, and watch again. Before we begin, and we won't even count this as one of the 100 points, but Joshua 10.13 says the sun stood still for how long? Well, one whole day. That's what it says. How long is one whole day? Someone could try to argue 12 hours, but it is clearly 24 here. But regardless, because it talks about the moon as well, uh, regardless, what it is not is... 36 minutes, <laughs> which modern Jasher actually says. I mean, talk about ridiculous, but we'll look at the modern fraud in a second. Also notice in 1014, Joshua says, there was no day like that before nor after. In other words, for these frauds to focus on the sun standing still, which is not what Joshua was quoting the previous story, uh, that's not the point. Uh, couldn't be because it didn't happen before nor after that. Uh, as the book of Yashar, then, you know, that's just simply illiterate. They can't even read really, yet they go through the trouble of adding Joshua out of time to this book. We're talking about the writers of this book. Understand that. We're talking about you who have read Jasher and fell for this. Yes, a lot of us have. All right. We've read the book for many years too. Uh, we never use it in our teachings because we've always had an issue with it. But Still, we didn't have a problem with it at first because it seemed sort of okay with some problematic things, but no, a true assessment, a full assessment shows this book is complete and obvious fraud, and this passage shows this. The whole book of Joshua and the only main thing that they really pull out of it in exact language is this story to try to claim that, oh, well, see, Joshua was quoting this. Joshua was not quoting any other book when he said the sun stood still. He watched that happen. I mean, come on. He was a part of that Amorite defeat. When he says, as it was written in the book of Yashar, he's referring to Jacob defeating the Amorites, the seven Amorite kings in his day. That's the obvious illusion there. And that's com that comes from Jubilees, not from this modern fraud, which forces this in order to try to make it happen. This is what happens when one commits fraud. Very obvious discrepancies like this are unavoidable. And again, you're going to see many, 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 many here in these four videos. Their attempt to fraud this point proves the modern Jasher a fraud written after Joshua, which is already a massive problem. Because Joshua can't quote a book that was written after him, can he? No. Crazy. Jasher only goes into this story in a little piece from Joshua's entire book for this, proving it's a forced fraud. They're trying to pull this out to try to say, oh, well, see, this was quoting Joshua. Uh, no, I mean, no, Joshua's quoting this. Oh, wait a minute. I'm confused because they're trying to claim both. Think about that. Uh, <laughs> it just makes no sense. If this writer lived in Joshua's era as well. They wouldn't only represent essentially Joshua 8 and little more from Joshua's era, and it does do kind of a recap of the book of Joshua, but that's about it. Uh, it does include Joshua's death even. Okay, so now we've got all the way through the years of Moses, all the way into Joshua. That's a major problem, okay, because Joshua didn't write it. And then even 17 years after Joshua died. So who wrote this book? Impossible! See, they also would not rewrite Torah and then claim they were equivalent to Moses, because that's what you do by writing this book of Jasher, the modern Jasher. You're claiming to be Moses or equivalent to him. You are not, you cannot be, and no rabbi certainly is. Uh, he received such revelation by himself with Yahuwah and the angel of the presence on Mount Sinai, modern Jasher is making this claim by the era and content in which it covers, and it really screws it up in just lined with occult lies in Pharisee 11. Moses was the only one in that presence, and the only one who received this revelation in that era, writing about that era. Period. There's nothing to discuss. It's already settled. It has to be written by Moses, and Jubilees was. 
They also would not copy Joshua's words exactly, as they certainly did, except, (laughs) I mean, that's called plagiarism, not Bible, though admittedly they can change, they do change uh, much of Moses' words and fraud in this book. Uh, Sure, they added that the sun standing still was only for 36 minutes. They had to add that. I mean, you automatically undermine the whole thing. But see, Pharisees love to do that almost as if they love to challenge you to see that you will not see through their very obvious blatant fraud. By the way, that is a Talmudic principle for them, so no surprise. Again, Josh was clear that's a whole day, not 36 minutes. Uh, doesn't work. Modern fraud called Jasher has many illiteracies and timelines. And we are hardly even going to touch those. We don't even need those in order to prove this out. Just reading the story straight, pretty much, or representing them. We're not going to read through it. This fraud is so bad, we could go on for likely 20 videos like this. Uh, We'll keep it to four and move on to the next topic. Because this is not that important, but important enough to put this where it belongs. In its place, in the trash bin. Now, we will cover even the story of Jacob conquering the Amorites that does appear, too, in this modern Jasher. But again, something's very wrong about it. Um, It is, you know, the amount of embellishment is so ridiculous as it equates the sons of Jacob, Israel, uh, as superheroes, uh, really a sort of a vampire wraith of sort. Uh, because Simeon and Judah are able to uh, let out this screech that everyone just, you know, runs away in fear and the earth shakes. That is stupid. That is ridiculous. That's not Bible. That's not needed to prove Bible. I mean, and that's what Pharisees do. They add to, they add to, they add to. You know, when you look at a good character, they make them even better. They make them into a superhero like this. When you look at a bad character... They take the bad and they make him into a more evil character. That's the way they operate because they operate only in leaven. They're fools. Nephilim attributes basically is what you're doing when you add superhero traits. Uh, Applying that to Jacob's sons is ridiculous. His sons take spoils uh, and there's no mention of what matters in the account of the Amorites, which... Uh, Jacob didn't take spoils. That wasn't what it was about. He exacted tribute. And it is that tribute that becomes Joseph's, not his other sons, and that's important because his sons take spoils, not even Jacob in the story in Jasher. So modern Jasher is wrong. Uh, But Joseph's inheritance from Jacob, according to Genesis, we covered last video, uh, it, it, it comes from this... Uh, tribute, 100% of it went to Joseph. There you go. Jacob had been stirring it, storing it for Joseph all of those years. So the story is wrong again and many times over. Again, that is just one and we're going to cover 100. So get ready. Now, what we're not going to do is put up every chapter from this manipulation and treat it like scripture because it's not Uh, The whole thing is really bad, and you're going to see that pretty quickly for yourself. You can read along for yourself, uh, and we encourage you to do so with open eyes, and you will see what we are saying. This video is not a study in Jasher, uh, as it is not scripture, not inspired, an absolute occult in influence, which we've already proven, uh, and these four videos especially will prove, uh, period. We will reference the chapter and what is wrong with it in terms of what is occult about it. That's the ground rules for these four videos. And where it flies against Torah in Genesis and Jubilees especially. Uh, we also will see some New Testament infusions proving this was written even after the New Testament. You'll see for yourself. That is what matters in these four videos. And all the time we are going to spend on what is clearly a Pharisee control occult fraud. You will never see us publish this fraud, nor treat it as if it has anything to say worth quoting otherwise, and we haven't used it in a video yet in over 370. At the end of these videos, 
you will have a thorough amount of research which will prove this book is an occult lie purporting and stealing the position, really, of Jubilees, taking advantage of its censorship, because that is the biblical book of Yashar, not this contrived, illiterate lie. These Pharisees just love to exploit anything they can. They are liars, and that's according to Messiah himself, Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9, and other places. <laughs> the others we mentioned, such as the Sefer Group uh, and other channels uh, on YouTube that we won't mention probably by name, uh, they're good men. They're falling for this leaven of deceit. Many of them came through the Messianic movement, and so they have leftovers of leaven uh, that they still need to deal with and test, and uh, hopefully, you know, they will awaken. Uh, we pray so. We believe so. Uh, so don't blast them. Encourage them, and you will have now have the details to do so. Anyone quoting Jasher is Scripture, this modern book, or Inspired should be informed it is not, and that it is actually Jubilees instead, and it's stealing that place. So that's foundation we won't cover again in this series of four videos. Let us begin with chapter one of Modern Jasher Occult Lie, number one. To start, I'll lump several into this first point, and some of these will be fairly long, and no, we're not going to shorten it, because we're going to cover all of it. Again, there are many more than we will cover as this book is riddled with error and trash, especially uh, the chronology of Jasher does not match uh, even the ancient Genesis nor Jubilees, the Septuagint. Modern Genesis has been tampered in this regarding, uh, basically, probably likely do to this manipulated text of Jasher, or at least by the same ilk who did both. Yes, they have been trying to change the Bible with such manipulations, but they are caught and exposed now. Yes, you can trust the Bible, but this is why you must also review the original Hebrew and Greek, which you can do today with tools like blueletterbible.org. That's one we love, and there's many more out there. Those who defend the Freemasonic numbered 66 books, well, enjoy your Pharisee Bible, because that's a Pharisee canon. Those of us who wish to learn the truth are going to test such Pharisee leaven as well, and equally so. Having done so, we can say with confidence, your KJV even, and we love the KJV, we use the KJV, but in parallel with the Hebrew and Greek to correct it, because the translation is still not accurate. It's a, a Pharisee canon, though, not the one from the temple priest, which is the only matters. Read the introduction of this book. It's free at bookofjubilees.org. Understand this modern jasher is not an ancient scroll. It's new. It is using the modern Genesis, which timeline has been manipulated. Watch who changed Genesis, in fact. Or, there's a very good video out there on YouTube, which we like. We wouldn't remake and try to, to take what he did. He did very well. It's called, Were the Pyramids Built Before the Flood? It has uh, over a million views, maybe millions uh, at this point. I think it's by Nathan H. Uh, and we really like that one. We don't agree with him on k and and Jubilees, obviously. And we've proven him wrong there, but that's okay. Uh, but he straightens this whole mess out. Uh, you'll see the likes of Kent Hoven. Uh, is clueless on this, and no surprise, he's far behind on many things in this regard, clinging to his Pharisee Bible and defending it to the hilt, saying he's KJV only, yet he's not even using all the books that were in the KJV in 1611. Okay, whatever. Defend your Pharisee Bible vigorously. Go ahead. We are going to move on, because we have crushed that lame defense already. Occult lie number two. Cain supposedly repented and wept for killing his brother. Where's that in scripture? This is a lie. Cain remained evil and never repented, but did the opposite, leaving Adam and Eve heading further east. He and his lineage are the origin of the occult, and they are the ones who embrace the watcher fallen angels, manipulating the entire human race. Cain remained evil period. He also supposedly buried Abel, which is a lie. Adam was the first among men to be buried, 
period, according to Jubilees, which is Torah. Jasher is not, not this one. The Jubilees, which is the modern, which is the biblical Yashar, says otherwise. They even redefine the word Enoch as rest, which is Pharisee leaven and wrong. Hanak means dedicated, and this is where Hanukkah comes from. Uh, though we expose that holiday in the Hanukkah hoax for modern observation, that's the word. Dedicated cannot be def- redefined to rest. It's not what it is. This is against Genesis and Jubilees, and yes, even in the very definition of this Enoch, the one from Cain's name, doesn't work. Seth is the rebellious one in his age, according to Jasher, modern Jasher. That's not scripture. It's backwards. This is an occult account and also Pharisee account because it does come from them in origin too. Genesis says, in the days of Enos, men began to call upon the name of Yahuwah. And that is accurate to the Hebrew if you break it down. Yes, Chuck Missler was wrong. I'll address that. Jasher is the opposite, claiming they again turn to evil and rebellion. You will find this throughout the book. Now, we are aware Chuck Missler made this claim uh, that uh, this says the opposite of what it says, uh, and its origin was the modern fraud Jasher, basically, uh, and or the Pharisees, whom he loved to listen to far too often. Uh, He was a Zionist, largely. He never proved that, nor could he. It was always a bad interpretation of the Hebrew, and it remains so. We do not use that here. Lie number four, supposedly the Gihon River, which surrounds Africa, not the area where the patriarchs lived, according to Genesis and Jubilees, which place the patriarchs from Adam in the east and on the Pisan River, not the Gihon. It's pretty easy. We prove that out. Watch Solomon's Gold series, uh, among other things. It's fraud. In fact, ancient Ethiopia is coast to coast of Africa, thus to surround it in Bible terms as the Gihon River must, according to Genesis 2, that means it must surround Africa. Supposedly, this river overflowed, destroying one-third of the earth. That is stupid. Additional, uh, you know, leaven, basically, proving this a fraud Indeed, that never happened. Nothing suggests that is truth. No second witness of any sort. It is a manufactured, inserted lie, as there are many here. Lie number five. Again, in backwards occult storytelling and fraud, this claims that Canaan, son of Enos, all right, that's actually supposed to be spelled with a K and a little different spelling, Kenan, really, uh, but fine, Canaan, it, it's the two are interchangeable. However, uh, but don't confuse this with Ham's son, because this is way before the flood. Supposedly ruled the earth in wisdom and knowledge. Really? Well, he ruled over spirits and demons, yet demons are the product of the dead Nephilim, and the Nephilim were not even procreated yet, as that happens in the days of Jared, who isn't even born yet. He's the fifth generation from Adam. This is a stupid lie. Ruling over demons is an occult tale and hope, basically, not Bible, even said of Solomon in the occult world. It is a lie. Who was given that authority? Satan was. Mastema. And Mastema is Satan in Jubilees, indisputably. It certainly isn't Gog, as we saw one channel try to attempt. That's illiterate. They're not even reading the book. But this is a worse lie. Before they even existed? Duh. Duh. This is not even a good fraud. If you actually test it, they can't even tell time. And this really is a telltale sign that this was written by Pharisees because they do that often. It is a regular practice for them. They are totally inept when it comes to timelines. Line number six. Canaan supposedly wrote, yet, again, This is before Enoch, and Enoch is the first among men to write, and he is not born yet. This is another occult lie. And again, very easily provable by the last portion. They clearly don't know their timelines at all. Lie number seven. 
Then the modern Jasher mixes bloodlines in fraud, having Cain enter into Seth's bloodline through Cain's Lamech. This is really bad, and this is what the occult does regularly, and it is to try to introduce the Nephilim, that's ultimately where they're going with this, into Seth's bloodline. They cannot, not before the flood, for sure. Noah's father is not born yet for many centuries, even though his name is Lamech as well. This is Cain's Lamech. It's another occult confusion for a Gnostic to pick up on and then claim Cain and Seth are the same blood. No, they were not in Jubilees. Identifies this, even tells you the bloodlines of the wives and the husbands. So we know exactly where they came from. They all came from Seth, period. This would mean Cain and Seth are mixed together. And that is a blatant lie, which Genesis and Jubilees never assert and prove otherwise. The opposite, really, because Jubilees does record these bloodlines of the wives and the husbands. None are Nephilim in Seth's lineage and none are king. All the way back to Adam and all the way up to Noah's sons through Seth. Only an occultist would keep attempting to make Cain look like a good guy, as he is the origin especially. And you're already seeing that here in Jasher, the modern Jasher, with his lineages such as Tubal Cain, who is worshipped uh, by Freemasonry as their founder, along with Cain, really, in some accounts. No, thank you. This is clearly an occult injection trying to mix Cain, whose bloodline will mix with Nephilim later, so they can later claim Nephilim were in the bloodline of Seth even before the flood. No. See, this is where this goes. And they do make such claim today. It's out there. However, Jubilees and even some of Genesis prove that wrong and that it is occult nonsense. This book is fraud, and we are very early in, folks, These are major problems of occult origin already. It gets even worse. Lie number eight and blatant occult. The occult drug is inserted which makes women barren. What? This was again before the days of the Watcher Fallen Angels, thus a lie out of place and context for one, and this is pharmacia sorcery. Sure, Cain's lineage may well have committed such in the days of the Watchers uh, who did teach that, but this is inserting all men did before that time. It's out of time, and it is a lie. Typical Pharisee. It claims men rebelled and no longer wanted to be fruitful and multiply. That's disgusting. Disgusting and stupid. It is an occult lie not found in Torah and against it. It's the opposite. This book is worse than Satanism. Lie number nine. Lamech from Cain supposedly killed Cain, which is a lie. Jubilees tells us Cain died the way he first killed, with a stone. Righteous judgment, basically. And the rocks of his house fell on him. It leads to a law, in fact, basically, the origin of an eye for an eye, which was the law, and was the law since the time of Cain, which is Bible. And it was recorded on the heavenly tablets, which Moses included in the book of Jubilees. Pharisees don't like the idea of Yahuwah's law preceding Israel, yet it had to for men to be judged righteous. Genesis says Lamech slayed a young man, not Cain the elder. Cain was pretty old at that point. Are you kidding? You can't confuse him for a young man. This is a lie opposite of Genesis and Jubilees. Lie number 10, chapter 3. We were still in chapter 2. The first nine lies come from chapter 1 and 2. Think about that. So, lie number, and they're big ones. Number 10. Jasher claims there was peace on all of earth in the days of Enoch. That's stupid. The book of Enoch says this is when the watcher fallen angels and their Nephilim progeny were wrecking the earth, as does Jubilees and really Genesis. This is a lie to cover up occult behavior occurring during that time. This is what Gnostic, Essene, and Pharisee frauds do, and we see it all the time. They make up such nonsense, and then they claim that scripture and try to put it over scripture in importance, which is ridiculous, but 
Don't fall for it, because many do. Still in chapter 3, lie number 11. Jasher claims Enoch went to heaven to then reside, ruling over the sons of God, or B'nai Ha Elohim, meaning the angels? What? This is the occult story of a latter occult Enoch, written by the same ilk of disgusting Pharisee when Enoch 1 vets his scripture. You will find that, and we will test that in very thorough um, direction. But Enoch there becomes the angel Metatron. He hasn't, he's even named, or whatever Transformer name that was. <laughs> he's not named such in Jasher. And that book of Enoch, the latter one, uh, whether it's two, three, four, or five, whatever, those are all occult frauds. Only first Enoch is scripture and can be proven to be. That's what was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, not the others. They're made up trash, just as this Jasher is, and it confuses and mixes in as Torah, supposedly. Even though it doesn't make the claim, it does an error, because uh, if Joshua quoted it, yeah, it was Torah. Especially written in the age of Moses. It would have had to have been written by Moses, because nobody else was on Sinai to receive that information. So, He's not named such in Jasher, but that's the story all the same. I mean, Michael, the most powerful archangel. Well, I guess he wasn't doing his job well enough anymore in early Genesis. And Yahuwah had to send a far inferior man, human, to replace him in authority. Can you imagine anything so stupid? Uh, What a dumb assertion. Yet Michael in the actual Bible is very successful. And still in his position in Revelation. Thus, this is a complete, absolute lie. Enoch could not replace him, nor would that make any sense. See how they manipulate and mix in? They are liars, and this, my friends, is leaven. Yahushua said, No man had ascended into heaven before him. Uh, Watch, uh, where did he not go uh, in this series? Thus, this is against Messiah's words when Jasher claims Enoch ascended into heaven. Yes, Enoch did visit heaven, but he did not ascend there. Really, this is the occult principle of apotheosis. That's a problem. And it is a lie as Enoch essentially becomes an angel. That's his apotheosis. And men do not do that as it is against the law of creation, which is exactly the law broken by the watchers, which brought the flood. Talk about backwards. This is a cult. Worse, a great horse comes down from heaven to take Enoch. Really? Stolen from Revelation, sort of even from the account of Elijah of sort. Uh, It was a chariot, but this is a horse. But when Messiah returns on a white horse from heaven, they're really stealing that. And they do that often. You're gonna, we're going to point some out, but if you look through really just in that frame of mind, you'll see all kinds of things, and it's very obviously disgusting lies. Enoch ascends in a whirlwind into heaven in Jasher. That's a lie. Wrong guy and wrong place. Enoch was not Elijah. Uh, men follow him, wanting to go with him which is a lie borrowing from Elijah's story, and that's really the account of Elisha, really, uh, who receives a double portion because he follows and will not let Elijah out of his sight. Uh, That's not the story of Enoch. It alludes that they did, and that too is a lie. Enoch was taken into the Garden of Eden alone, where he still abides. That's what Jubilee says, and that is Torah. He is the high priest in the Holy of Holies. No one went with him. No man can enter, just as with the temple. Only the high priest. Jasher, modern Jasher, is a lie. In chapter 5 as well, Jasher claims Enoch, whom the New Testament is clear, even did not die. That's what it says. Supposedly died at 905 years old. This, too, is a lie that doesn't even agree with Jasher, which said he was taken to heaven centuries before, and people don't die in heaven. I mean, you know, not that we go there when we die, but the whole thing is just nonsense. This is just nonsensical fraud. It doesn't even agree with itself. Jasher mentions snow before the flood, which is a concept requiring precipitation, which Genesis 2.5 says there was none before the flood. 
There you go. Note also the patriarchs of ancient Tavila lived in the modern Philippines, and there was no snow, especially not the amount Jasher claims. Uh, not only is that tropical now, but even more so before the flood. Line number 13, and we're moving on to chapter 4 here. Uh, we're only on chapter 4, folks. That's a lot of lies in a few chapters. This fails miserably already. Jasher claims men remained holy until the latter years of Enoch's son, Methuselah. This is a lie. The Watchers ascended a generation before Enoch. And it mentions Watchers. So, how can it claim that the Watchers came down, but then, oh no, nothing happened though, right? I mean, everything's cool. <laughs> what a lie. Men were becoming evil during Enoch's time, especially and beyond, all the way to the flood, and increasingly uh, worsening and worsening and worsening. That's what Yahuwah says. Go read it. Every imagination of their heart was evil continually. That's what Genesis says. So which do you believe? The Bible or this manipulation of it? Number 14. These Kabbalist writers also claim Noah had a second name, which is a lie. He had one. It was Noah. <laughs> they claim it was Menachem, or Menachem. Uh, research that, and you will find the rabbis love this name and honor it in multiple heroes much later, but what they are doing is trying to claim they originate as, well, Noah. It was his name. No, it wasn't. See, they're mixing and confusing, which is what they do. That's why they introduce extra names and things like that. It is what they do often. See, Menachem was also an Essene seer, or psychic, or insert whatever occult sorcerer title you wish, doesn't matter. That was him, and the rabbis love him. Well, Josephus especially, because he was like him, an Essene Kabbalist seer. Yes, Essene was. Josephus was. Uh, this is why we do not trust Josephus and test him often. There's some good stuff there, but you've got to keep your eye on him. He was not a prophet, nor was Yahuwah uh, his God. He, it wasn't. Uh, he serves a different religion completely. So Kabbalah occult inserted into this book. This is not an original text manipulated, folks. This is a complete occult fabrication using elements of Genesis and Jubilees. And it even goes too far into Joshua, which it shouldn't. Uh, and even after Joshua for 17 years, which it shouldn't, uh, not if it's Torah. It inserts New Testament principles as well, trying to undermine the New Testament, uh, such as in the story, borrowing from the story of Yahusha. Uh, it's ridiculous. No, it can't. This is a modern lie far after the New Testament, way after. How illiterate to claim that the era of Joshua is included in this book, yet Joshua quotes from it a story of Jacob and the Amorites, which originates in Jubilees, not from this fraud. Let us also not forget there is a prime minister in recent times of Israel with this name, Menahem, uh, Menachem, uh, is how they pronounce it, I believe. Hmm, nothing new under the sun, folks. They love that name. Lie number 15. Jasher then proves it was written far later once again, and it does this many times. It claims the 120-year period, which Yahuwah is clear, and we cover in the series, is lifespan limitation. But instead, no, Jasher instead says it's 120 years until the flood. Thus, the origin of that illiterate doctrine when Yahuwah clearly said he would reduce man's lifespan to no more than 120 years. We cover this in this series. Watch it. Uh, it's there. I think it's part five or something like that, six, somewhere in there, uh, which physically happened, and we can observe this today generally. It's really not even debatable. This is where the notion comes from, probably, essentially, uh, that Noah went around begging everyone on earth to leave their sin. Please, please repent, right? He was the John the Baptist before the flood, and then God... Everybody got baptized, I guess. I don't know. But sure, Noah would tell them so. 
if they were redeemable, and he would know better. He was building an ark and living a holy life. He was never an evangelist in scripture. That's not there. That's made up in the church today, uh, not before the flood. These people were corrupted in their orders. Understand that. The Bible's clear on this, and especially Jubilees and Enoch go into major detail on exactly what that means. They're no longer eligible for salvation at that point, and there was none to preach to. Thus, Noah didn't do it. That was not Noah's purpose, and he knew better. What a waste of time to preach to the Nephilim and hybrids to see if they'll accept, you know, Yahuwah when they're irredeemable and they can't. (laughs) Nonsense. Utter occult fraud. Line number 16, and we're on chapter 5 in the last slide as well as this one. Jasher claims Noah did not want to bring children into the evil earth. Well, this is not factual and not supported. Uh, Noah knew his purpose to survive the flood already and that his lineage would, and he knew he needed children, so he wouldn't have had a problem with it. This is illiterate nonsense and really leads to the Gnostic Noah. Go watch the movie Noah and see for yourself. That Noah is an idiot. That Noah is evil. And that ain't the Noah of the Bible. Neither is the one from Jasher. That Noah was evil and desirous to kill a child on the ark even. That's, what, that's how they, they, toward the end of the movie, it's so ridiculous. This plays well with such occult nonsense. It does not jive with Torah at all. Lie number 17, still chapter 5 here. Jasher then waxes really stupid when he claims Noah married Nehemiah. Now, we have covered this in our videos on the mystery of Cain, uh, And the Serpent Seed, Uh, there's four videos on that, check those out. Who just so happens to be from Cain, Nehemiah. Now, we already covered this in Jubilees, it defines Noah's wife, Amzara, not Nehemiah, wrong. And that's definitely Pharisee lore in history, for sure. And her complete lineage from Seth, well defined, not Cain, as well as those of the wives of the sons of Noah, even, we cover all of that. This is a lie. And Nehemiah, from Cain's Enoch, well, she just so happens to be a Nephilim breeder among men who are they trying to insert here. That's disgusting, and that's definitely a cult fraud completely. Probably dead by Noah's days anyway, but this is a lie. Ah, how nice. They tried to slip the Nephilim into the bloodline of Noah. Gross. This is a cult trash. Nehemiah, the fraud wife, supposedly begot. No, not Shem first. Oh, no. Who should be the oldest? According to Genesis, and yes, Genesis says Shem is the oldest. If you really read it, the rabbis don't know how, so don't follow them. And Jubilees especially mentions by date when they're born, and it's Shem, Ham, Japheth, for sure. But no, 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 Neymar has Japheth first. Well, why? Why would that be? Well, because Japheth will enlarge Neymar on the earth. That's what it says in Jasher. Are you kidding? Uh, Rather brazen boast, uh, an incredible lie. Now, Noah does prophesy of Japheth enlarging his tents, not Neymar and hers. But let's be clear never into Shem or Ham's territories. And by the way, all three sons had the same mother, thus why would she boast about one enlarging the tents into the other son's territories? That's just totally stupid. But see, Noah pronounced a curse for that behavior. No son could live in another son's territories, not among the three. However, enlarging Nehemiah, or Cain's name, once again, on earth, that's what this is about, her Nephilim, progeny, because she was a Nephilim breeder. Oh, this is very telling. This book is a cult trash indeed, and this proves it. Again, Shem is the oldest, then Ham, then Japheth, the youngest. This is completely backwards, and in a cult fashion, leads to the enlarging of Cain's lineage after the flood, which is a lie. They die in the flood. Some Nephilim survive, and really, this is a claim that the Nephilim will be enlarged on the earth because Nehemiah, wrong wife, is the Nephilim breeder from Cain and never a wife of Noah. 
This is where this leads, and it is an occult plant, so they can attempt to claim such. This is also found in Pharisee fraud, several places, proving Pharisee origins, far later, not written before Joshua. We know the Pharisees don't appear in the Old Testament, at least not as Pharisees. They are Samaritans then. They are not in Jerusalem. They are not in the temple until 165 BC when they usurp the authority of the priesthood and exile the temple priests. That's what the Qumran temple priests say. Lie number 18, and now we move into chapter 6. In the account of the flood, there are more details of Rai, many, but he claims that Yahuwah shook the earth in warning so that men would repent before the flood. We already covered this. This thinking does enter the church today, and it is a lie. The Bible is clear. The start of the flood was the fountains of the great deep exploding. Yeah, the earth shook, and then the heavens of uh, the windows of heaven poured, no doubt. But this was not a warning, but judgment was already underway and final. And those tsunamis were not small, and they were crushing, period. You didn't get to repent before you got hit. Yahuwah did not fire a warning shot. The flood was sudden and its destruction unstoppable and far larger than this suggests, showing this is a writer who did not know nor understand the flood, and the Pharisees definitely do not in most of their writings. The timeline is also off, but this has much larger problems. For instance, it only focuses on the rain exhausting men, yet forgets the fountains of the great deep sent mega tsunamis and did the greater devastation from the beginning. This is the Gnostic account, uh, basically, that Jasher purports. It's the one that ended up in the movie as well. And you see that often, even in the church, and it's a lie. It's not Bible. This is evident in Genesis and Jubilees and incoherent in this modern fraud named Jasher. This is also where the thinking in the church today comes from that 700,000 people and many animals came to the ark after 40 days even in this account. Well, that's stupid. That's totally ridiculous. 40 days is when the ark was lifted. They were already dead. Then, begging to get onto the ark. Too late. You're dead. You can't beg. No, they didn't. (laughs) The ark was lifted at that point. And somehow in the midst of all this flooding, the beast of the ark then, according to this modern fraud Jasher, went out and pushed these men back. How stupid. That wouldn't even be necessary. The ark was being lifted by (laughs) a massive flood. This is illiterate. Yahuwah shut the door to the ark and nothing left it. So can they read at all? The answer is no. The story continues as all the ark was in fear, yet they well knew they were safe, according to Genesis and Jubilees. They even have Noah doubting here in Jasher, and that is a lie. Noah then refers to the ark as a prison, which is completely inept and out of character. He knew it was the salvation of mankind, animals, and plants to replenish the earth. This is such a lousy lie. He was wearied and sighing. No, he wasn't. That's stupid. Noah was a righteous man and knew exactly what was happening and why, and he was told so. He knew. He and all on the ark were being saved. He knew what was happening. This didn't just happen, and he didn't know what was going on, and that's what Jasher is assuming. And that is illiterate. There is no account of his doubting nor becoming a pouting idiot, as this idiot writer claims in fraud. Noah also let the animals go out first, and then he waited almost two weeks, according to Jubilees, for Shavuot, according to Jubilees, uh, to then disembark when he renewed covenant, built the altar, etc. Jasher claims he left with the animals. That is a lie written by one who, well, can't read. Chapter 7, number 19. The names don't quite match up in chapter 7 either, but we're not going to go through that. However, huge one, 
uh, and likely the Pharisee origin of the changed modern Genesis. K&M is missing, uh, the son of R. Fox said here, the guy who reconstituted the occult after the flood. K&M is recorded in the book of Luke, was in the ancient Genesis, uh, the Septuagint in Greek, uh, the Samaritan Pentateuch even, and in Jubilees. Well recorded that the guy did exist. Modern Genesis has been changed, too, by these same people, same mindset. And that's why we have to test everything, even what is called canon today. This is the cult going around changing and manipulating scripture, indeed, with Pharisee leaven. Lie number 20, same chapter. This chapter, which claims the cloak of animal skins (laughs) that Yahuwah gave to Adam and Eve way back in the garden were actually magic. Yes, occult magic. That's what this is. Talk about nonsense. That's not a Bible concept. Yahuwah doesn't need magic, and he doesn't perform it. He claims this was passed through the ages, and now Nimrod, well, the evil, wore it and gained great strength from it. Right. That's a lie. That is uh, right out of medieval legend. Indeed, this is fraud. If Noah had these, and no account says he did because, well, they were just clothes, and after over a thousand years, likely pretty rank. Ooh. Uh, No thank you. (laughs) But if he passed them to anyone, it would have been to his oldest son Shem, likely, who was the righteous one, who then would have passed them likely to either Elam or one of his sons, uh, but that's his oldest, because that's the way it works. If indeed this cloak was that special, it would not go to Ham, it wouldn't have been passed through his sons. It was not magic, and it would not have any value a thousand years later other than sentimental, and again, it would stink, likely. It's absolute nonsense, but if you wish... I have this really nice leisure suit from the 70s. I'll sell you for a hefty price, because, well, it's magic. John Travolta only wishes he could have worked a suit like this one. Hmm, wink, wink. No, that would be a lie, too. Lie number 21, same chapter in the story. The evil Nimrod is, well, not evil, but the opposite. There you go. It does it with Cain. It does it with Nimrod. It does it with Esau even. And this is absolute fraud. And this is a cult because it's the opposite. These are evil characters trying to be made good. Yeah, he turns evil later, but that's not still. He was never holy, period. Uh, He's even holy offering on the altar to Yahuwah. Oh, good job there, Nimrod. No, that wasn't Nimrod. Nimrod was evil. And the origin of the legend of the false god Baal, even in occult lore, Uh, you've read about him in the Bible, right? These are lies. Of course, Nimrod used this strength to conquer and subdue, uh, which is not a biblical principle. Yahuwah hates that and doesn't support it, yet supposedly was behind it. Oh, really? That's a lie. Jasher thinks it is because it is an occult lie, parading a scripture and not very well. Colonialist justification, that's what you're seeing here in this new book written by fraud around the colonial era, even. And that's what this really proves. Imagine that. We keep finding these kinds of influences you'll see throughout, which clearly prove this is a new document at that time, not ancient writing. And let's remember, no one even claims an ancient scroll of Jasher was ever found because it wasn't. Well, not this modern version. It wasn't. However, it was the real true Yashar, which is the Book of Jubilees, found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. That is Yashar, the book of the right, righteous, just, or really another way to say Torah indeed. Lie number 22. Terah, Abraham's father, is brought into the story out of time. Nimrod is the time of Babel, and Terah was not born yet until after Babel. It also has Yahuwah fighting for Nimrod's building of Shinar when the opposite is true. Yahuwah destroyed it. Yahuwah hated Shinar, so he said, if you believe him anyway. Uh, But why not believe this modern fraud 
instead. Shinar was not dedicated to Yahuwah, but they would build an occult tower there in rebellion. We all know this story. Jasher even claims Terra served as Prince of Nimrod's host. This is out of time and context and a lie. Nimrod would be dead, according to even occult lore, by that time. Terra was not righteous indeed, but this cannot work. Of course, it's backwards again, because Nimrod was supposedly holy at that time, Thus, Terah should not be serving him as he was an idol worshiper. So it still doesn't even work backwards. It's incredible. The opposite is true for both. It shows a complete disregard for Scripture uh, and the Bible timeline. Uh, It's wrong and fraud. There is no record that Nimrod ruled over Shem, yet this account says he did. That is a lie. Then Nimrod turns evil. Okay, at least that, but he was never righteous in the first place. And Nimrod's son, not in the Bible, uh, but the occult world just loves this Mardan son of Nimrod, that's for sure, uh, who gets injected into this modern fraud jasher. Oh wait, sounds like Marduk, in fact, in the same area. Hmm, well... This is not scripture, but a cult infusion, and it is a completely false book manufactured by Kabbalists. It proves this over and over again. Lie number 23, chapter 8 now. Here they defile copying Messiah's story. Disgusting. They claim Abram was born to a very large star in the east sky. Ever heard that before? Hmm, what a lie. That never occurred, and they are stealing from Messiah's story because this is far newer than any Bible text. It is a fraud. Wise men of the king come. Oh, wow, same story. Hmm, same fraud. Oh, did I forget to say they are conjurers? Oh, this enters the church as they claim the Magi were occult sorcerers of Babylon and Persia, which is a complete lie, stealing from the place where they actually originate, which is in Ophir, Sheba, Tarshish, the modern Philippines, according to David, because he prophesied this in Psalm 72. Watch our videos on that. Not the occult Babylon, which is a stupid lie. I mean, illiterate, just so dumb. Nice, wise, demon-possessed sorcerers get first dibs on the location of Messiah. Sounds like a Hollywood movie. Uh, As a newborn, so they can do what? Well, kill him, of course. What a great time to kill him while he's a newborn. Come on. This is illiterate occult lie. Oh, wait, they try to inject them, those three wise kings who were magi, occult sorcerers, into Messiah's story as well in fraud. We cover that. They apply messianic qualities to Abram in fraud, stealing from Messiah's story. He already has a fabulous story and is a great man as it is. You don't have to add messianic qualities to him. That's Pharisee 11. Nimrod plays the role of Herod here. Oh, same story, and tries to kill Abram, who is hidden in a cave by his father. Abram goes to Noah. What? Noah is long dead before Abraham was born. Long dead uh, in any chronology. Uh, He then goes to Shem. Uh, Shem, too, is dead by the time of Abraham's birth. We prove that out in this series. We cover this. Jubilees has that timeline. And this is a lie. Ancient Genesis agrees where the modern Genesis has also been changed in these timelines, and we we do test that too. Abraham was supposedly raised by these two dead men who weren't alive for 39 years in the modern Jasher. I don't know, maybe it's like uh, Star Wars. (laughs) Oh, wait, no, that's Kabbalah too, Kabbalah Wars. When Genesis and Jubilees place him in his father's house with Terah, being raised there. He actually takes a major stand against idols and in relationship with Yahuwah, even at the age of 14 especially, uh, but within Terah's house, which is really the story. Not Noah or Shem's, who are both dead. The whole point is Abraham rose righteous, despite his father's idol worship, and he rejected it. Isn't that a better story? And that's the real story. 
Now chapter 9 in Modern Jasher, and we're almost done here. We're on lie number 24. Now Abraham saw the sun shining and claims that sun is Elohim. What? Can you get more occult than this, the sun god? Indeed not. This is worship of his father, Terah, who worships the sun, moon, and stars as gods. Come on. Abraham never did such, but the opposite. He took a stand against it. This is occult nonsense infused. Then, Abraham prays to the moon. This is a lie and complete blasphemy. Then Abraham worships Yahuwah as well, finally. Uh, but this narrative is inserted in there in complete leaven against Genesis and Jubilees. Abraham never worshipped the sun and the moon. And number 25. Then comes the Tower of Babel out of place and time, which was destroyed before Abraham was even born. Yet here we have it, and it is wrong in Jasher completely. In fact, it claims it takes three days to walk, uh, which is inconsistent with Jubilees as well, which gives that data. And though large, it is not that large. None of this is truth. None of this is scripture. And there you go. Just the first 25 major occult infusions into the modern book of Jasher. Don't like one or two? Well, that's okay. You can not dismiss them all, and you would have to to be able to in order to claim the modern Jasher is scripture. Of course, you also have to overcome the lacking history from last video and the fact Joshua and Samuel both mentioned the book of Yashar as specifically accounts from the book of Jubilees from the previous video before that, which we already proved. Just getting warmed up here, 75 more to go. Coming very soon on the heels of this, we have over 370 videos now on this channel, one for every day of the year now, uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. They just can't do it. Can't bring themselves to do it, that is. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble and Utreon and just added brand new Odyssey. Uh, so check that out, all in the description box. And our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well, uh, now in podcast format. Uh, all links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor link below. We now have five books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries. With a new release now available, Rest, the 400-plus page case for Sabbath. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it is available in hardcover or softcover there. Additionally, this week, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, uh, with color maps and interior, as so many have requested overseas as well. We already have that in the Philippines. That, too, is available in hardcover or softcover overseas on Amazon, if you wish. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, now are free in ebook. Yes, our content, folks, is free. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran, as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, 
pinpoints the seat of Gog, of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full text for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.